Hey, hey, and welcome back. This is a video that I've really procrastinated on doing. It's taken me long enough, but now we're gonna get into it. It's going to be a longer video, so I'm just telling you that now if you don't wanna stick around. As always, I will put chapters on there, but it's actually associated to my mega redemption. The trip that the wife and I took where we touched, I wanna say it was at least five countries for our anniversary, and that included going into Lake Como, Italy, seeing Venice, Rome, Pompeii, and even Frankfurt, Germany. So by all means, strap in, sit down, let my co-star do her thing, and then we will catalog a trip that really should have been filmed already. Welcome back to my dad's channel. If you're new here, make sure to click that like button and subscribe, and don't forget to share. So with the Mega Redemption, it really started with positioning flights and redemptions for hotels all over the place. So without further ado, let me just introduce the Atlanta Renaissance. It's actually at the Atlanta airport to Marriott property. We were able to do a redemption there to stay the night because we flew in the night before. I like to get there before and be nice and early, especially when I have international flights. So we were looking forward to going to Italy and you can look at some of the past videos that I have that catalog the actual points expenditures, but the Atlanta Renaissance was great. We had some dinner by the bar, the room was awesome, and this was a time where I was doing all lives in January. They were kind of hit or miss, but either way, I still want to have something that documents the trip that everyone can enjoy. But like I said, the room was pretty nice, the hotel was pretty cool, great appointments, wonderful grand area, like the entranceway, that was pretty cool, so we were able to hang out in Atlanta for a night before we headed to ATL Airport. So now speaking of one of my favorite airports, the busiest airport in the world, this is where we caught our Air France business class flight. Now, we were originally supposed to be on the A350, the newer business class product, but you know, I guess things changed because this had been booked months prior. Like, I wanna say eight months prior. I think I had booked it in the spring. But either way, we were all set, but they put us on the 787, which wasn't bad. It's still a Sky Team business product. I can't lie, the wife and I both agreed we like Delta One more, but it's still a good product. So the food was actually pretty decent. They had, of course, adult beverages, and we took a look around at some of the appointments. It was the same thing. We got on to a wide body jet we were able to turn left instead of sitting at the back with Adam and the rest of the pours. Now, when I say the pours, it's just a joke. If you get offended, good. But in any case, that flight over was actually pretty decent and at that point we had touched down in Paris. Now, we both have fond memories of Paris from the previous year when we actually stayed there on our very first Meaningful Points Redemption. Now, once we got to Paris, we were able to go see yet another salon, well, that's what they call them, salons, uh, the Air France Lounge. And this was, yet a, this was a two story lounge as opposed to the one story that we saw the previous year. Now the previous year, it was great open space, but this two story lounge was actually pretty nice. They had two food areas, one on the downstairs, one on the upstairs, nice little, you know, uh, a bespoke staircase. And we were able to, we were literally, I was drinking a beer at six in the morning. I didn't care. I figured it was five o'clock somewhere in like, uh, you know, French Polynesia or something. So I just figured I would take advantage of it and have a look around the lounge because I am all about that lounge life. And luckily they did have a lounge because guess what? the rest of our business class leg had actually been delayed to get to Milan. So now flying over the south of France was actually pretty cool, coming through northern Italy, flying into Milan. I gotta tell you, when we actually landed at the airport, I was kinda looking at it a little funny because, I mean, it was all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't believe A380s take off from there, but look a little dated, but either way. It served its purpose, so we got there. So our original flight was from Atlanta to Milan. So we got there and we were able to grab our bags and meet our car service. Now, these are some of the things that you're gonna encounter in the story that I didn't put in the original video because I said it would be a developing adventure. 
So I was able to use the Chase Travel Portal and book a car service that brought us from the airport. It was about a 45 minute drive to Lake Como. Now it was definitely new and different to see the Italian countryside and some of the cityscape as we made our way to Lake Como. But when we got to Como, wow. The Hilton that was there actually used to be an old silk factory. So what they did was actually built around it. They retained the first building, the initial structure, and they built around it. And I tell you, just walking in, you just feel like money. And where this hotel is situated, literally over your shoulder is Lake Como. And when you walk in, you are immediately recognized as a diamond member. They took our bags. They invited us to go up to the restaurant, which was actually in the hills, in the cliff on the mountainside or cliffside or whatever you want to call it. And that's where we were able to see some stunning views of the surrounding area, the lake, the mountains. It, and if you know me, I'm a sucker for mountains because I haven't seen very many of them. So they always really captivate me up there was sort of like an infinity pool that they do heat at night. There was an inside dining area. This is all happening while they got our room ready. And when they did get our room ready, Boy, did they get our room ready because we were lucky enough to be upgraded. So we were upgraded to a terrace, one bedroom, king suite that I was able to actually film live. Like I said, I was doing a ton of lives here. It, it was just crazy. It was amazing. I had some of the best tiramisu I've ever had in my entire life at this hotel. So during this time, we were able to actually go to Lake Como. There was a villa right next to us that we were able to take pictures at that was on the lakeside. And we actually made it to downtown Como where we went to the Piazza Volta and we saw some of the cityscape there. We stopped in the store, got some coffee and just walked around and it was pretty cool. So we were there for two nights and then it was off to Venice. Now, for those of you who have not been to Europe proper, but basically in greater Europe, and you know, Italy is no exception, one of the best ways to get around is via high-speed rail. It's a lot of times cheaper and more dependable than, you know, doing small flights. It's just, it's just really nice, and you can get a way better deal than, you know, hunting for super bargain airfare. So now what we did was we actually took high speed rail from the station, I believe it's called San Giovanni in Como, all the way to Venice. So it was about a two and a half hour ride. So you already know that if we were gonna be in a train that long, we had to ride business class. So we were able to get the business class tickets, got our bags on, and we were just jetting through, well, it's funny that I use the word jetting, but we were railing through um, the Italian countryside all the way to Venice, where they offered us refreshments and everything on board. We had nice spacious seats all to ourselves until we got to the bridge and we could actually see the city. And it looks like the city's kind of just floating on the water. It was really nice before we pulled into, I believe it's called Santa Lucia um, train station to start our stay in Venice, which was only a day, but we'll get into that. Now, when you're in Venice, the first thing you think of, gondolas. That is exactly what the wife and I wanted to do. We actually managed to get a room at the Hotel AC, yet another Marriott property. This one, we didn't go too extravagant because we, only, we knew we were only gonna be there for one night, which was the intention. We were leaving the very next day. So we got there in time to get to the hotel, drop our bags. We took a water taxi through the Grand Canal, which was absolutely amazing. We could see all sorts of things in the distance and we saw like the back end of a lot of buildings and how they use the boating system in order to get through the canals of Venice. Now, also there is like a shopping row cause Venice is like, you know, fashion crazy. But in addition to that, a lot of people don't know is that when you get to Venice, even though the main mode of motorized transportation is boat, you can actually walk through the entire city as all of the canals have concrete bridges where we were able to go get a gondola and actually walk back to the Hotel AC. But let me tell you about this gondola ride. It was absolutely wonderful. We had a great, I guess you can call him a pilot, a gondolier. We had a great gondolier who actually took us through a lot of the canals and some of the more historical places like 
he actually took us to a house where Mozart stayed when he stayed in Venice. He took us by the Grand Opera. And all of these things are connected via the canal, and it was wonderful. It was, it was a great, romantic, just historical, just great experience. And like I said, we made our walk back to the Hotel AC, but not before sampling. What I have to say is the best pizza in the world. It's the best pizza I've ever had. If you ever get a chance, have pizza in Venice. You will not be sorry. It, it was incredible. It was absolutely, that's all I can really say about it. So then when we got to the Hotel AC, we went ahead, we got some rest because we knew the next day it was off to Rome. So once again, the best way to get around Italy and a lot of European countries is none other than high-speed rail. We did it when we went from Paris to London. That way we could see more than a, you know, more than one city, more than one country on one trip. But heading to Roma Termini Station was incredible because that train was fast. And I do believe it was actually faster than the one we took from Como to Venice. Unfortunately, we passed by but did not get to stop in Florence. But we headed to Rome and you can actually see where the Italian countryside started turning into Roman cityscape. And once you got in, the hustle and the bustle of Rome was intense. It was crazy. And you know, we were in business class once again. And once we got to Roman Termini Station, it was actually pretty organized, even though the station was huge, tons of trains, tons of people. It was pretty organized. We were able to, able to exit. And yet again, I used the Chase Travel Portal, just as I had used it for the gondola ride. I used that to get yet another car service to take us to our fantastic hotel, the Palazzo Manfredi. All of these car services, they all drive Mercedes. So we were able to drive a big body Mercedes. I couldn't tell you how to get to the train station again, but the ride to the Palazzo Manfredi was actually pretty cool. It's pretty smooth. And we were greeted with amazing views of the Colosseum, which happened to be next door. As a matter of fact, the hotel itself is actually built above the Ludus Maximus, which is one of the greatest gladiator training arenas that was connected to the Colosseum via underground tunnels. So we were that close to history. Now, at this time, we're staying at a hotel which I had found crazy redemptions for. Now, this hotel was actually a part of the small hotel group, the small luxury hotel groups, and they used to be associated with Hyatt, but now they're associated with Hilton. So I actually booked this hotel with Hyatt points. So there was no money out of pocket there. We actually were able to eat at the Michelin star restaurant Aroma, which is at the roof. So that's where we had breakfast, which was included in the shadow of the Colosseum. We got great views from there. Now, we were also able to celebrate our actual anniversary there and try fine dining for the first time. And uh, spoiler alert, they somehow tricked me into eating pancreas. Yeah, so if you're ever in Europe and they offer you anything called a sweet bread, yeah, it's a pancreas. I, I don't, don't, don't eat the pancreas. It, it was... Needless to say, call me low class, but yeah, fine dining, yeah, you can have it. I'd rather just give me something with some preservatives or something because it was a lot. You know, there were wine pairings, and by all means, the ceremony was great, and I even took pictures with other couples. It was, it was fantastic, and they greeted my wife for our anniversary, but yeah, fine dining, just give me some pizza or some spaghetti or something. I'm, I'm pretty cool with that. But the restaurant itself was absolutely wonderful, but that was a part of the whole experience. Now, once again, remember, we did the redemption, but the Chase Travel Portal really came out like a superstar because that is how we arranged our tour of the Coliseum, which was incredible. We got some great shots. We were able to stand on the Coliseum floor. We were able to go where they raised the animals. They raised the gladiators. It was crazy. And just the amount of history of there, the Palatine Hill, we stood where the old Roman Imperial Palace was. So we got to experience huge parts of history. And even walking through the streets of Rome, you felt the history. You felt just the worldliness of a city that has been around for thousands of years and has changed through time. So that was really great. Now, the next tour we actually took, courtesy of the Chase Travel Portal, was a tour of Pompeii and the Amalfi Coast, where we met a travel buddy. Shout out to my man, 
Quentin, if you are watching this, pleasure to meet you, man. So we were hanging out with our travel buddy and we went down to Pompeii, you know, the Mount Vesuvius Pompeii. We were down there where Mount Vesuvius destroyed that town and the town of Herculaneum. So they're actually still actively excavating Pompeii and the surrounding areas. So we were actually able to see like address markers for people's homes, be invited into kitchens. We went into our first brothel that was very new and unique as they had a painted menu of services, if you know what I'm saying, that were on the wall. We saw the beds where said um, business transactions took place. We were able to also see casts of people who were trapped in the ash and just experience just the splendor of that sort of history. We walked on real cobblestone Roman roads that had been worn down by chariot wheels. Now, in addition to that, we were able to make it to the Amalfi Coast, which was crazy. We went to a town called Positano, which is literally nestled into the mountainside, and we pretty much climbed a mountain up and down to go down to the beach, come up. We had these wonderful lemon ice treats that were crazy. It was just a wonderful... Just, it was just a wonderful experience, and it was all shuttled by coach, and they brought us back to Rome to the Piazza Popolo, and then we just took a walk back to the hotel because it was still, that city comes alive after 10 o'clock. So it, even though we got there late, we were actually able to leisurely walk. It was well lit, very safe, and we headed back to the hotel. Now, with our adventures in Rome coming to an end, we had to get back to the States. So I was able to secure a Lufthansa business class ticket from Rome to Detroit, Michigan. So we took yet another car service we arranged and we headed to the Rome airport. Um, it's FCO. I always butcher the name. I'll call it Leonardo da Vinci airport, but I'll get the name right one day. So when we got there, we were able to check in through the special Lufthansa business class check-in. Now, one thing that I did not mention earlier, and I was waiting on this moment to mention, is that in Europe, business class travel is different from intercontinental travel. You don't get the lay flat, huge, gigantic seats. They basically, what they basically do is they have narrow body jets like A320s and they simply do not book the seat in between you so that you can have more space. And then they serve drinks and other sort of amenities there for you. And I have to say, sorry, Air France, but Lufthansa blew this experience out of the water where Air France was concerned. F between France and Italy, the seat was cramped. I didn't particularly care for it. And I just didn't care for the plane, period. But the Lufthansa experience coming out of Rome, heading to Frankfurt, night and day, we got a jetway. The seats had more pitch. They had more room between you and the front seat. I actually took a window seat because I was able to look at the Italian and French Alps as we flew north. I was able to see parts of Germany before we landed in Frankfurt. And I have to tell you, the staff for Lufthansa, they are top shelf, top tier business product. I would suggest it to anybody. But now we have left Rome and we are now in Germany. So now once in Germany, we got our bags and we found the Sheridan. We actually picked up the Sheridan Frankfurt, which is right at the German airport at, in Frankfurt. And we were able to stay there and the room actually came with lounge access. This is one of the few times that we were able to get a lounge in a hotel. I actually went live from the lounge, beautiful lounge space. I actually did like an hour long live, able to have some drinks, have some stuff to eat. And I actually participated in Joe Barreto's live where we did his stuff. With, it was right before he um, canceled his gold card. But we were able, I was able to participate that in that from my room in Germany. It was a great space to stay in. Super clean, super nice, just very Germanly efficient. And the best part about it is the person that checked us in at the front desk, he was actually just recently had stopped living in Rome. So he was very welcoming. It was a wonderful area. We had some good food. And then we got ready for the next day because it was a 19 hour layover before we got on the wide body heading back to the States. Now, before we got on the Big Bird, we were able to go to the Lufthansa Business Lounge. Now, we didn't get into the Senator's Lounge. We went to the regular Business Lounge and I can tell you right now, it was absolutely worth it. 
I don't feel as though I missed out on a ton not being able to get into the Senator Slams because I did not have United Gold, not United Gold, I did not have Star Alliance Gold, so I wasn't able to get there, but the Business Lounge was more than sufficient. Beautiful open space, huge views of the tarmac, and they had, everything is free pour, just like in the French lounges, and it was just wonderful. We had some eggs, we had some stuff to eat, we were good to go, I got a little work done, and it was a very relaxing space before we jumped on Lufthansa 787. Now, once on Lufthansa 787, I gotta tell you, compared to Air France's 787 product, night and day. Once again, sorry Air France, but the Germans outdid you. The service was just impeccable. It was out of this world. I was able to actually enjoy this space with my lovely wife. We had our amenity kits. It's like they wouldn't stop checking to make sure we were okay. And also on this plane, they actually had like electronic shades that, you know, you hit a button and it just made the glass opaque, which I thought was a beautiful touch. And then also, you also need to remember that Lufthansa is famous for having a loo with a view. So there's actually a window inside the bathroom. So you can turn on lights if you want to. It could be natural sunlight, but either way, you can use that. And it was just a great experience to bring us back home into the United States. And I have to say, hats off to the Detroit airport because we were able to do my wife's global entry interview on arrival. And the global entry process was actually just as fast, if not faster than that in Atlanta. And as an aside, get your global entry. If you're gonna be traveling internationally, this is not clear, this is not TSA pre-check, get your global entry. It will be worth your weight in gold because once you look at the passport line of people who don't have it, you will always be happy that you did. Just go to the kiosk, you go get checked out, and you are back in the country. And there you have it. After that whirlwind adventure, a quick reposition from Detroit back home to sunny South Florida, and we were all good to go. So thank you so much for joining me with this, and especially you can you know watch me point and do my pointy thing at other videos of other vacations that we have actually logged and enjoyed. And I hope you enjoyed this and I'll catch you later.